Thanks for joining us for This Week in Odyssey, where subscribers to Odyssey, the print MIS for marketing ideas for printers, can discover what's new in Odyssey and learn about the best practices to use Odyssey to its fullest. Let's get started. Well, welcome to MI4P's This Week in Odyssey webinar. Um, this is episode number 13, if anyone is wondering or keeping track. And if this would have aired last week, our computers were frozen with minus 65 degree wind chills. And even here in Michigan, where I'm located, it was a balmy minus 40 wind chill. And then just the other day, we had record high temps. Now today, winter's return. So kind of a crazy thing going on out there with Mother Nature. Hey, I can't let you off the hook on that one because last week in Fargo, and uh, Trish, for all of you listening in, Trish is one of our remote workers, as you've uh, figured out here. Last week in Fargo, the air temperature high was 20 below for the air temperature high. So I, I think your snowflake background on your uh, browser is very appropriate today, Trish. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Dave. Yes, it was a chilly one out there in Fargo. Um, so back to our webinar, webinar here, um, we will continue to be presenting these every other Wednesday morning. Um, please note, depending on where you're located, it'll be noon in the afternoon or 11 a.m. Central Time. Um, and this bi-weekly webinar, um, we like to focus on the release notes that come out every other Monday. Um, if there happen to be any noteworthy bug fixes, um, tips or tricks, um, pretty much anything and everything you'd want to know about Odyssey. Um, with today's episode, um, I'm going to go over the updates that have been made in the various parts of the accounts receivable section. Um, our development team, they've been pretty busy in the background for, well, four weeks or so, and today we're going to show some of their hard work in Odyssey. Um, to start off, I'd like to go over um, the help menu. I know I've gone over it before um, time and again, um, but for maybe some of those that are new on the webinar, help menu up here, if you click on that, um, the top one, the view Odyssey documentation, that will take you to our user guide, which has been update, updated um, with the most recent release of our um, accounting sections. Um, more on that as the quarter goes on. Um, the release notes here, takes you just to that, the release notes um, that are released every other Monday and includes all the feature updates and any fixes that were made. Um, and then if you need to open a support ticket, that'll take you to your help center um, where you can open up a support ticket and ask your question and we'll get back to you um, as soon as we can. So with that in mind, um, I'm gonna go into our accounting section. Um, my icon happens to be down here in the lower left, but um, hovering over any icon, you get the crosshairs. If you start using accounting more, you could certainly move that up to the top if you want, and then you can go into accounting just like so. When you click on the accounting icon from the Odyssey dashboard, it initially takes you to the receive payments. Um, what I'm gonna go over today to start with is actually what most people would be interested in, um, is the main invoicing tab. Um, and so going in here, this has been changed um, a little bit. The underlying mechanics of how invoicing is done and so forth um, hasn't changed. But as far as the user experience here um, on the, the top with the, the layout and so forth, we've made that, uh, made some changes to make it a little bit more user friendly, um, kind of break some things out into different sections to um, hopefully the flow of invoicing um, will be a little bit smoother for those that are in here. So this is under the main invoicing tab. Um, we still have orders ready to invoice and an invoices ready to post section. Instead, they were kind of lumped all on one screen and maybe to some it was a lot to look at, um, a lot to take in. So what we did was we split this up now. The orders ready to invoice is a separate area or separate section, would you say? Um, so clicking on that will take you to this screen here where um, you're still presented with your order number um, and all the different things that are um, associated with that order. Um, on, on the far right, under actions, is where you would select to um, invoice that order, and I'll go more in about that in a minute. Um, if you have um, jobs that are connected to an order where there's other jobs that are not ready, um, 
it'll kind of give you the the order number. This happens to just be a website order number, but there might be other jobs that are connected to it. Um, you kind of get a red box up here. You must wait for all the other jobs are done before you can invoice an order. So this will give you a little alert if you have any of those situations. If you have an order number that has not been changed to the status of orders ready to invoice, but you still might want to produce an invoice for a customer, if you start searching or um, entering in an order number, that will also come up on the screen where you could create an invoice. Um, but what I'm going to focus on are um, one of the orders here that are already have been made um, in the orders, it's ready to invoice um, status. So once it's been moved orders ready to invoice, it will show up in here. I'm going to click on this invoice. Uh, get this out of the way here. I'm going to click on these and see if I can get to one of these. Now, so a lot of these might not necessarily be ready to go, um, and that's not a problem. So what I can do real quick is I'm going to move one of the orders that we have um, into the ready to invoice um, area, and then we should be able to see that go through. And while you're doing that, Trish, am I right in in saying this, that the reason that, that, that those weren't ready to invoice is just because they were not a completed job yet? Is that is that correct? That is correct. So that would be saying that there could be multiple components of an order and not all the components were able to be moved um, ready to invoice. Um, and so when that happens, then um, they're not able to go into the ready to invoice. And what I'm actually going to do, um, now I think about, I'm actually going to go to my own personal odyssey. Um, I do know that I can move one of my orders into the ready to invoice and that'll make, um, I think, a little bit um, more sense in that regard. So let me just move this one ready to invoice and I'll go back into that same section um, and that should show up. So we're going to move this guy to ready to invoice. Um, there we go. And then I'm going to go back into the invoicing section. And again, it defaults to, oh, this time it defaulted to orders ready to invoice. Um, so as you can see, the one that I just switched ready to invoice is now showing up. I'm going to click on the invoice button. And this will take you to a similar view um, that you may have seen before, but again, a little different. Um, the invoice header is at the top here. You can still go through um, and fill in the different sections that you need to. Um, if you need to add a new line to your invoice, you can still add a new line and fill in the, the different sections. Um, you can show totals if you want. Um, I'm going to close that off. The billing and shipping details um, is down here with a little plus and minus. Um, I think they did that, the developers, just so it's not as crowded with maybe, would you say, more of the important things. Not saying that this isn't important, but I know um, typically the billing and shipping is automatically filled in, but you do have the option to, to plus it to open it up and kind of verify some information here. Um, so and this, is, this is so fun to see because I, I, you know, I've, I've seen some of this more from a distance in this particular um, time through. But um, just to reemphasize something that you already said, Trish, is the functionality really, with a few exceptions, which we might be talking about in a little bit, but the functionality really is the same here. It's just a lot cleaner to look at. It's a lot easier to kind of see what's going on. And so that, that's what I really appreciate about the work that's been done on this uh, in this section. Yep, that's a good point. The developers, um, you know, they tried to, like you said, keep the functionality pretty much the same, but showing off um, the overhead here, trying to keep it so it's a little bit more user friendly and so forth. So, yep, they will have a little bit more about that. But um, as far as creating the invoice here, um, invoice header, um, invoice detail. Once you have everything set up the way you feel is set up, you can save and close the invoice or you could save and print it, which generates it um, on a different tab, and then you could close it. Um, I'm not necessarily going to go through and um, print this off and so forth. However, I might just go through and save and close this invoice and I'll show you where I'll be going next. So I have already created the invoice. I had saved it. Now it's moved to the invoices ready to post. So now that I click on this invoices ready to post um, tab here, um, here are all the invoices, so affiliated with orders, that would be ready to post. So it'd be set in stone. Um, here on the far right, on the actions column, as you can see, there's a little arrow. If I click that, you can still edit the invoice before you either print it off again or email it to your customer. So again, you have the ability to still edit your invoice. You can reprint the invoice um, if you need to. Um, I'm gonna click on email invoice. 
And then here's a little pop-up that comes up. And again, you could start typing in a name or an email and click on it and then it'll be um, put up here where the invoice could be sent to. Um, you can still change the subject line if you'd like. If you wanna change anything about what the message says in your invoice, you could certainly do that um, and click send message. Um, so that, that really hasn't changed for the email. Um, or you could remove this invoice, which would then take it back to the ready to invoice status on this other tab. Um, I won't be moving anything back into there. Um, but these are your options under the action tab. You can email it, you can edit it, you could reprint it, or you could remove it if you did not want it up in this um, list of invoices. So say you wanted to maybe only invoice for a certain company, um, you could certainly X out or remove the ones that you did not want. So again, a little bit different look, but the behind the scenes is still going to perform the same. Um, if you hover over the posted summary here, it just, Odyssey just gives you a quick snapshot of the number of invoices posted on a certain date and what the total was for those posted invoices. Um, we'll get into that in a little bit more with invoice history, um, but that's what you do when you hover over the posted summary if you just want to see a quick overview of the past 10 or so days. Um, you can print all the invoices that are on the screen. You can also preview the distribution if you click on one of these. It'll kind of show you the different chart of accounts and what the amounts are for each of those, so that hasn't changed. Um, one thing I will mention, as you notice, there's a missing post selected button. Um, the key to that is you need to at least make sure all of your invoices here have been printed. Um, once you print all these invoices or generate them, would you say, um, you would get a post selected button. Um, sorry, I should press print all. So as you can see, as soon as I press print all, the post selected um, button showed up. It's just ensuring you or we're giving you the chance to make sure that you're viewing these invoices before you post them. So it's kind of a safeguard or fail safe, would you say? Doesn't mean you have to review them. Then you can select them all and post them if that's something you would like to do. So if you don't and see what new one there, if I'm, mm -hmm. if, I, if I'm right, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I'm right, I think um, when we're saying print in this case, that might be kind of stretching, well, stretching sounds wrong, but kind of, <laughs> kind of using a bigger, uh, uh, capturing a bigger idea there. It's, it's generating the PDF, I, I believe. And yes. The implication that you can print from that PDF. Is, is, that, is that kind of a fair way yep. of saying it? Dave, you're correct. Um, it could also be known as like generating, as you can see. Um, when I had selected all these and clicked the print all, it took a few seconds, but there was an extra tab up here. So it's basically generating um, the invoices on a separate tab, would you say? And then, of course, depending on your browser, you could download this as a PDF, but that would be generating. It's not going to go and print it off on your printer and waste paper. So don't be alarmed by that. You certainly could do that if you wanted to actually physically print them off, um, but it's more or less just generating on a on a separate tab. Um, That's one place where that mm -hmm. finger needs to actually hit the print button there. So Yeah. Um, so again, you could certainly go ahead and post all of these if you want, or you can just select certain ones. It just depends on how you do your accounting. Um, but that post selected button, we've had a few folks ask where it, dis where it went, and I said, well, we'll just have to make sure that you print all of these off at least once, and then your post selected button will show up. All right, so that's um, more or less a high level overview of the changes with the invoicing. Um, I did mention that I wanted to go into invoice history, so I'm gonna quick go in here. And before you only had the ability to filter or um, search by invoice number, we now have given you the ability to also search by description. So you might not remember the invoice number or what's part of it, but if you start typing in letters, if those letters are part of anywhere in the description for that invoice, um, this will appropriately filter down to anything that say has a letter C or the letter U or what have you. Um, so instead of also, like I said, just filtering by um, invoice number, you can just start typing in the description or if you know it's a postcard or what have you, um, Odyssey will um, start filtering down those invoices. So that's the one change that we made here that I feel and what I've seen is a big change because now everybody might re not remember the invoice number, but they might remember it's a booklet or, you know, what have you. So a couple different ways to start filtering here. We retain the functionality of entering a partial company or you can select from the drop down and so forth. Um, but it's the filtering here that's changed on this part. You know, that, that really is nice. I, I, I 
my last birthday ended up with a zero on it, which means that my memory gets a little bit more challenged each day, I think, here. <laughs> so having cues like that to, uh, to help hide from, uh, from another decade of memory, uh, that's big. So I, I, I'm really glad to see that change to that predictive typing. That's really nice. Yes, that's very helpful. And also, say you find that invoice that you're looking for, you can click on the invoice number from this page as well, and it'll open up on a separate um, view as well. So another opportunity to um, check out the invoice that you had emailed to your customer, and if you didn't email it, um, what it was when it was posted. So you can still have the availability to um, open up that invoice um, as you like. That is the invoice history um, function again that is found under the main um, invoicing tab at the top under invoice history um, the other section a couple more I'm going to go over this is receive payments um, this section um, they these were in maybe a little different order and I quick noticed a couple of these may have been just slightly change um, the name of the field, maybe to make it a little bit more clear or understanding. So as one does accounting, um, I feel that we put this in um, an order that might make mo most sense to probably most folks to do accounting. Um, again, you can start typing in um, a company name or some letters, and then you could um, select from a company. If there's any invoices affiliated with that company, you could certainly select one of those. Um, and press pay selected and Odyssey will fill in the invoice um, that's needed to be paid and so forth. Um, if you want to use your payment day of today, the amount is automatically filled in for you. Um, you choose the method of payment that your customer is paying. Um, again, all depends on um, you know your, your accounting methods and so forth. If they're paying by check or you want to have a reference ID in here, you could certainly add that in as well. You can pay multiple invoices you could pay the specific invoice, which would be shown up above. Um, if you want to have a down payment for a specific job, you could certainly do that. That's a little different. That would be leaving this invoices to pay blank and filling in this over here. If you want to say you want, you told your customer 50% down, 50% later, or something like that on job number one, two, three, four, or what have you, you would certainly fill these in. Um, and fill in the amounts, and this would then give a down payment towards that job that is not yet um, ready to go through to the invoicing part. Um, for accountants, cash and bank, and if there's a discount available and so forth, some other things that could be chosen here. Um, so this, again, has been um, just changed a little bit. The underlying mechanics has been the same, but as far as the order of what these are, um, how they're being shown, um, we're hoping that for the most part would would flow for an accountant and um, you know would make some sense once you have this filled out you'd simply select apply payment it would go down here in this payments entered line and then if you want to post that you certainly could do that um, and, and that's where you win the game of printing that's what it's all about you know all that hard work you're doing to make the printing happen and this is where they exchange the money for that printing very important screen no no doubt about that very right, and this is where you're putting your deposits in there, would you say? Um, so that is an overall of um, the receive payment screen, would you say? Um, the last one I wanted to go over that also had some updates was credit memos. Um, a little different than receive payments. So credit memos, so receive payments, um, as we were, as I was saying, you are either paying down on one invoice, multiple invoices, or maybe you're putting a down payment towards an order. The credit memos, you could say, um, I want to put maybe a credit on um, a company or a customer's account. This could be another location, um, or I should say the location that you would do that. You could also, as it's indicated, um, put an invoice number in here as well and go through and um, post the credit but if you would also like to have a credit for the account as a whole for that customer um, you can do so as well um, similar where you could start typing to look up the company and if you would like to put an invoice number you may um, the date is um, you know whatever date that you would choose most likely the same day that you're entering it um, if there's an amount um, here's a note that pops up um, the negative is a credit that would be put on their account if you need a new adjustment Putting this in as a positive or no negative in front of it, would you say, would consider this an adjustment. So we have a little note right here about that, as you can see when I'm within this amount field. 
Um, if you want to have a reference number of any sort for this um, entering credit, you could also um, add that in. And then we have a couple options for how to apply. Um, do you want to select the account that this is going to be going into and so forth? Um, save that credit, similar to the receipt payments, puts that line down here. Posting credits will then apply that amount um, depending on how you have it set up here. Um, so this look, some of these have been moved around and maybe the name has slightly changed, but it's just trying to make it a little bit more user friendly um, in the order that would most likely make sense for someone that's going to be entering in a credit and so forth. Um, so that's the update to credit memos. Um, we went over a little bit on the received payments and how that's changed. Um, the bigger one, obviously, is the invoicing screen where now we have the actual buttons or tabs to press on to go to um, the location that you're wanting to go to instead of it all being on the same page. Um, and a little changing filtering to um, the invoice history. So with that, um, that's what I have to show on the updates that our developers have been busy with, with accounts receivable, um, especially the invoicing section. Um, I didn't know if, Dave, if there was anything that you would like to mention um, for this webinar. Boy, is there. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I've been kind of watching some real-time updates. And uh, with this update for the for accounting, it, it, honestly, it's one of the, uh, it's a pretty sizable update. And uh, there's a lot of it that you're seeing uh, in front of you, right on the screen, a lot of interface and um, kind of layout type of updates. Those are obvious um, that, that we've made changes there. Behind the scenes, um, there's not really been a ton of functionality changes, but there's been a, a lot of cleanup, and I won't bore you with all of those geeky details, but uh, there has been some cleanup going on behind the scenes as well. And most of that goes okay, but every so often there was a little, you know, there's, that does introduce a few other things to check, and, and honestly, sometimes that's an unexpected thing. We had one of those, and I know for at least one of our customers, it could be more, uh, but I know for at least one of our customers, it did provide some um, uh, some tougher moments this morning um, in, in the way that they're handling their invoicing. So uh, I've been watching some real-time updates, and I know that the one biggie uh, that was happening that, that needed a little attention, that was happening even as we were speaking during this webinar, and it's in the process of landing right now, that update. And um, if that was affecting you, you know what that is. You'll see that. <laughs> Um, and that update is landing on the development version of the server right now, uh, dev.mi4p.com. And so if, if, uh, if you are seeing something that's maybe just a little bit wonky, that's um, uh, making it a little bit more challenging, uh, know that you can use dev.mi4p.com, and that workaround is on its way up there as we speak. And it will be pushed to um, the production version of the server, which is the one that we're showing here that Trish is using at app.mi4p.com. Um, I guess I haven't heard the exact timing on that, but I suspect that will be overnight tonight um, when um, when that will have its least disruptive periods to uh, to do so. So long story short, um, we've already made a few tweaks based on um, uh, some, of, some of that customer feedback, and that is showing up on dev.mi4p.com, soon to show up on app.mi4p.com as well. Yep, thank you, Dave, so much. That is important that um, you mentioned that. Um, and just one quick other note to go along with that. There might be just a couple more slight updates made to these feature updates we released for accounting. Um, but overall, um, the interfaces will, for the most part, stay the same or stay new, would you say? So like I said, we'll just take a few um, maybe changes here and there that um, either are affecting or that we've heard from our customers. But overall, um, I think I've heard some positive feedback on how this has been um, switched around and so forth. So um, with that, I think um, we're going to be done with today's webinar. And I just want to say well, thank you. Oh, sorry. And, and before you wrap up, Trish, I'll throw mm -hmm. in one more note as well. Um, for those of you that are watching, um, certainly that I would expect that that would be mostly our Odyssey subscribers, but perhaps there's a few others as well. But uh, for our Odyssey subscribers, many of you were already um, on, joined me yesterday for our State of Odyssey meeting and um, really enjoyed having, having all of you attend. Not everyone made it, of course, uh, so that recording is available and I will soon be getting that out to all of our 
Odyssey subscribers. That is, that was an exclusive event, exclusive for Odyssey subscribers. Had a few um, few fun perks in there as well. So I want to make sure um, if you weren't on that web meeting yesterday, I want to make sure you hear about that and know that that recording will be coming to you soon. And um, I'll also be following up with all of you, all of our Odyssey subscribers over the days to come just to make sure we get all the loose ends tied up with some of those fun perks that we've made available to our existing Odyssey subscribers. So I uh, was glad to have, have that webinar yesterday. That was the last word that I wanted to throw in. So Trish, back to you. Yep, thank you, Dave. And I also was able to watch a recording of the um, Odyssey webinar and um, great stuff there. So I encourage those that didn't attend, if you know you have about 30 minutes or so, that'd be great. But it was um, really good information. And thank you, Dave, for you know putting aside your time to get the the message out there. So thank you. Um, and so thank you for joining us during this edition of This Week in Odyssey. Um, we have a quick survey at the end, and we appreciate any feedback that you might have for us. Thank you so much. For those watching live, stick around for a two-question survey. On behalf of the whole team at Marketing Ideas for Printers, thanks for joining us.